We are back once again with another episode of Golf Cart Garage. I am Tim. I work for Golf Cart Garage. I am also a member of the Gearheads On Demand service that we offer uh, at Golf Cart Garage. That is a service where you can schedule an appointment with me and I'll call you and I can talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. If you're interested in that, click the link in the description. Uh, my slots, the, t the available time slots, they do get filled. They do get filled pretty quickly. And uh, that's why if you, if the, don't, don't worry, you can, always, you can always catch me live here and ask a question just like Art's about to here in just a second. Uh, you can catch me live on Tuesdays and Thursdays on Facebook and YouTube at 12 noon Central Time. So if, don't, don't fret if the slots are filled. Just catch me live with your question. Have your question ready and we'll see what we can do. Hopefully, if I don't know the answer, there will be someone in the chat room you know, that might have experience with your question also. So, let's see. This is episode 114. What you got, Art? Go ahead. Uh, ask me your question. Appreciate you being here, by the way, Art. Let's see, we're good over there. All right, well, the garage is open, so we're gonna get started. Let's see, getting a positive reading of 36 volts when I use my voltmeter, put on the go negative post and positive on the frame, not causing an issue. Go negative post, positive on the frame. Well, I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't do anything on the frame. Don't worry about anything on the frame. Just uh, you should get you should get 36 volts at the two small posts on the solenoid, if that's what we're talking about. When you activate the gas pedal, you should get full battery pack voltage, which is 36 volts. But there's not a frame ground, so I mean that's why I say don't worry about anything on the frame. Uh, Gene Hansen, what's up, Gene? Thank you for being here, man. Okay. Let me run the social media links. You can also follow Golf Cart Garage on Instagram, the TikTok. Uh, the links are running right now. I don't want to forget to run those. So those are running. I do have a coupon. I'll run that later. Let's see. Ricky Smith. Hey, Ricky. Thanks for coming back, man. Let's see what we're going to get into today. Question number one. Ab in the chat in YouTube. What's up, Ab? Hello. Philip Gearheads. Hello, Tim. Hello to you. Question number one, what is the minimum recommended amp hour rating for a 12 volt golf car battery? I mean, are we talking about a electric car with four of the 12 volts? Or are we talking about a gas car? Kind of sounds like we might be talking about a gas car. Well, there's Obviously, in a gas car, do whatever your manual says, you know, on the battery. Whatever your manual is going to say is going to have a specific size that, it, that they want you to use. But I can tell you this, there would be many different amp hours that would work in a golf cart. It's a very small engine. It's not even as big as a motorcycle engine. So even a motorcycle battery would probably work. Uh, I can tell you one of the popular, popular sizes and probably cost efficient size batteries is a Group 24. It's very popular in golf carts like in a... That's a Yamaha, that's my Yamaha G1, and it has a Group 24 in it. It's been in there for years, you know, and haven't had a single issue. So that's a, that's a very popular size. A group size is, is this actual size and footprint of the battery, but there will be many different amp hours, you know, in the same size battery that would be available to also. So don't worry about the amp hour too much. Just, just get you something with, that will fit the footprint but always check your manual first. Do what your manual says first. But there's, I can tell you this from experience, there's a lot of different half hours that would work in a golf cart. Art says, both my carts do the same. I was installing some lights and the negative, I would use touch the frame. Just curious, not causing any problems. Yeah, I would, I mean, you, if you want to, you can do it that way, but I wouldn't use the frame for anything uh, on a golf cart. Just go run it straight to the battery or straight to the voltage reducer, when, you know, which, 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 whatever cart you're using. Uh, Greg Elliott. What's up, Greg? Thank you for being here. 
Is Dino into heavy metal also? He appeared a bit more laid back. Glad you got through the storm okay and that your mom continues to improve. Well, thank you, Greg. Dino Man, where you at? Come here, come here, come here. <laughs> he's, he's being shy today, but anyway, he's here. Yeah, he's fine. And he is into heavy metal also. Yeah, just because you're laid back doesn't mean you're, you're not necessarily into Metallica. There he goes. Do you see him? He's, he's, a, he's in that other golf cart. Mary Austin. Hey, Mary, how are you? Thank you for being here. Let's see. There's a huge maxi fuse on the battery pack. It is rated at 250 amps. I've also seen one with a 400 amp maxi fuse. Which one would you suggest? Does it matter which controller you have? Well, I know what fuses you're talking about. You're talking about those fuses that come with an Alltrax controller, aren't you? There, there's a 250 amp one and there's a 400 amp. It, de it depends. They send you that fuse when you buy an Alltrax controller, and depending on how big of a controller you bought, it is going to determine. I don't know where the break is from the 250 to the 400, but if you bought the biggest Alltrax, they're going to send you that 400 amp fuse. But uh, so, in other words, it would be d dependent on the, the size of that fuse is going to be dependent on how big your controller is from all tracks, but they're the ones that are sending those out. Missy, hey Missy, glad you could make it. Manny Ponce, glad to have you, Manny. What's up, dude? That's a fine looking studio. Well, thank you. Let me check over here on Facebook, see what's in. No. Nope. Nothing going on too much over there. Easy mic. I, I installed my lithium yesterday. Cool. Pair of Eagle Big Batteries, 60 amp hour total. Stock 2012 PDS, 29 miles to shut down on a full charge at an average of 15 miles per hour. Cool. Thank you, Easy Mike, for that. I need to know that because 60 amp hour total is not very much, you know, in the lithium world. So that's going to be a relatively inexpensive pack compared to what you could get. And if you're getting 29 miles out of just 60 amp hour, just double it. You know, 120 amp hour, you're going to get 60 miles or something like that, you know. So that's, that's good to know. Let's see. Missy says, we hit 23 miles per hour this past weekend on our drive to gas with five people on it, lifted in big wheels and tires. Does that sound about right? Uh, yeah, I don't think the five people is going to make that much difference in your top end because gas cars actually, you know, they do a real good job of compensating for weight with the way the clutches work. So, I mean, I'd call that good, Missy. That's, that sounds good. 23 with that many people on it? Yeah, I wouldn't mess with it. I'd leave it alone. Leave it just like it is. Let's see. Number two of the regular questions. I have a 2008 48 volt club car. When stepping on the pedal in forward and reverse, it does not want to move sometimes. My grandkids got stuck with it, had to tow it home. What do you think is wrong with it? Thank you in advance for your help. I can tell you this from experience. Grandkids are really, really good at finding any flaw in, in your golf cart. I used to tell my customers when I would sell a cart, they would say, well, what kind of warranty are you going to give me, Tim, on this cart? I say, it's a six-month bumper-to-bumper warranty. And they say, okay, cool. And then I say, excluding one thing. And they say, what is that one thing? I say, grandkids. If you mention the word grandkids and that cart has a problem, then the warranty is voided. Because uh, they, they can find the weak spot in any golf cart. Uh, your, your symptoms, though, your symptoms sound like a... M core issue because it sounds like an intermittent thing and in a club car the the most thing the, the the device or component that can be the most temperamental and be the most intermittent is the M core you could have a sticky micro switch inside that M core that's sticking sometimes you could have gotten water inside condensation let's see So the most common thing, next thing I would look at, if it wasn't the M core, if you didn't think it was the M core, check for the obvious stuff. Check for loose battery cable that can cause those problems. Uh, you can check a loose connection, make sure all that's cool, and make sure all, everything's clean and tight. 
Number three, how can I tell if my golf cart needs a new motor? Low power when fully charged batteries. Well, most of the time, or almost like 99% of the time, a golf cart electric motor is not going to lose power over time. It either works or it doesn't. Its, its power output is dependent on the power input from the battery pack or the power that it can draw from the battery pack. So they don't actually degrade in power over time. So that you can get a different motor if you think you're, you know, if you want more power, you can get a more torquey motor or you can get a more higher, uh, yeah, more higher speed motor if you want to do that. But you're, there's no really way to tell, you know, unless you put your golf cart on a dyno when it was brand new, and I don't mean my dog dyno, I mean the machine dyno. That's what he's named after, by the way, the machine, the dynamometer machine. Uh, you could put your cart on there when it was new and then put it on there years later and see if there's a, a, a difference in power. But it, if there is, it could be related to your battery pack just as much or even more so than it would be your motor. The motor's not going to degrade. So uh, just decide what you want. If you want more torque, you want more speed, you want a combination of both. Number four, when I hit the brake on my 2019 club car onward gas, the brake won't lock and I was told that it's because the spring broke. Does that sound about right? Well, there is a, there is a device that the, the link in, involved in the linkages for the brake on an on a onward gas. It's a, uh, parking lot release mechanism and there's there is a type of spring in there it's like a it's like a doesn't look like a, a normal spring it's just like a lever that, that bends and, and acts like a spring so there is a device in there that that has what they could have been talking about that uh they could have described as a spring and so yeah the answer to your question would be yes that that that's probably correct what they told you i, I did missy i did check out uh entertainment and pretty cool I saw some range tests that he had done and I also after you pointed out to me about that club car with the seats that turn around and look backwards like it was like the I forgot to mention this to you the other day it was like the next day I, I get a dealer catalog uh, that golf cart dealers get it's uh, about everything new coming out it was on the front page that that uh, club car with the turnaround seats that, and there's even a table in between the, you know you and the kids it's pretty cool I mean I don't know I didn't even know that there would be a demand for that type of car, but I guess there is. They're making a big deal about it in the dealer magazine, so it's pretty neat. It looks more like a, I don't know, are y'all familiar with the GEM car, G-E-M cars? It looks similar to one of those, but it's a club car. Number five. I have a 2004 Easy Go. It has new batteries, push pedal, contactor closes, and then opens. What could be the issue? If you have a 2004 PDS with a run toe switch and your contactor is clicking, or solenoid, some people call them a contactor, some people call them a solenoid, your contactor's closing and then releases, then uh, the, your controller is involved in the activation circuit for your solenoid. So your controller could be releasing that solenoid. So you could have a controller issue there. Uh, that's what I'm betting, because I've never seen a series cart do that. Like the other type you could have in 2004 would just be a series cart with no run toe switch. Never seen one of those uh, have that particular symptom, but I have seen with the run toe switch 2004 range easy go pds that where the controller would release the solenoid would not couldn't would not allow the solenoid to stay closed let's see number six that's where we're at we have an electric workhorse i believe made by easy go yeah, workhorse is an easy go utility cart. Uh, we were thatching the lawn 
light gas pedal press repetitive, repetitively. Stop going forward and backwards. Our shop mechanic says plenty of voltage. Is there a common part for this symptom when this happens? Uh, man, I tell you what, I don't know how much power they put in those electric workhorses, but thatching a lawn with it, uh, that's probably one of the quickest ways. I've talked about this. The quickest way to heat up a golf cart, like the electrical system, to heat it up, the quickest way to do that would be to drive around slow. You know, a lot of people don't realize that. You drive it fast and it, it, everything is working like it's supposed to and it's got airflow going on and you're not putting anything, you're not putting as much of a strain on it as if when you do when you're put, driving it slow. Because when you drive it slow, your controller has to take over, your controller has to think, it's got all these diodes inside of it. Everything starts heating up. And if you're thatching a lawn at the same time, I don't know if I would ever recommend thatching a lawn with an, any type of electric vehicle because you're really putting the electrical system under a strain. Uh, mostly the controller. So in your case, if there is something wrong, uh, I would be interested to know if after it cooled off, did it start working again? But if not, you could have taken out your controller. Let me check over here on Facebook. What is up over on Facebook? Is that a uh, Jathan Maricelli? I think I got that right. Jathan Maricelli on Facebook. What's up, Jathan? 2004 Club Card DS with upgraded Plum Quick Bandit. Card has been working great and goes 20. Recently, reverse has begun to be extremely weak. However, in fact, sometimes I have to push it backwards with my foot to get it going. Once I get it moving in reverse, however, it goes full speed in reverse. But it also starts to smell like something is burning. Oh, uh-oh, there we go. I changed the FNR switch and that didn't help. Any thoughts? Well, my first thought would have been your FNR assembly. I'm assuming that we're talking about a, a series uh, Club Card DS with a with a high speed. You got to understand that Plum Quick Bandit is is re, it's, it's basically a stock motor that has been rewound for more speed. Well, more speed means if you put it under uh, stress, it's going to require, it's going to try to pull more amps. You got probably more heat going on. So something could have gone wrong inside that motor, Jason. Could have definitely gone wrong inside that motor if you're getting, especially since you were having to like uh, help it out to get rolling. It may have gotten too hot on you. Uh, call up, uh, call up Robbie at Plum Quick and see what he has to say about that. Or, uh, I bet you he would have a, a definite answer for you on, on what, because he's, he's, he's definitely has, has had that question before with his motors. Uh, I know Robbie, by the way, or he knows who I am also. Let's see. Mary says one more question. Last windshield I got for my TXT was super flimsy. Can you suggest a windshield that would be stout? And thank you for all the help. Well, they, windshields come in different, they, they come in different thicknesses, so don't get the thin one. I mean, I, I, I like to run, I like to run a one piece. I don't even, I don't even want the, uh, the foldable one for myself personally, because I, I did a lot of stuff in the woods or I do a lot of stuff in the woods and I tell you what happened in the in season is that when that windshield's folded down, those spiders just come right into your golf cart with you when you're going through a trail or something like that. So I I, I like to run the, the full windshield. But yeah, they do come in different thicknesses. So if that's flimsy one that you got, uh, it was just one of the less expensive. Obviously, the more expensive ones are going to be a little bit thicker. So ask about thickness when you order your new windshield is what I would say. Jason Thayson says, thank you. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate you being here, man. Come back on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 noon Central Time. We are here twice a week. And most of the people that are in here are here, at least are, are here with me. And Dino, oh, he's asleep now. Uh, 
Let's see, number seven on the regular questions. Bumping noise out of left test wheel, not all the time, will stop sometimes after a turn. What could be causing this? I think I, I think I talked about this one day. It may have been one of the tips on one of the episodes. Uh, the, if you have a noise in your rear end somewhere, you don't know where your noise is coming from, any type of noise, you've got a noise. And I, t I, I think of the tip was to drive the car, make the noise and let it start happening and then turn the wheel and put and, and if it, and see if the noise changes, turn it one direction and then turn it the other direction and see if the noise changes when you turn the other direction. If you can change the noise or make it go away, what you did by turning is that you put more pressure on one of your tires and one of your axles than you, than you did on the other one. So you put more pressure or less pressure on, you know, on either side. And that can help you narrow down where the area is the noise is coming from. And if that does happen, it's very likely an axle bearing. You know, you've got axle bearings on each one of your axles in the rear. Let's see, Missy said, Quan said he needs a closer look at the G1 you got. That's my G1, I've had it for, I've had that car for, I was trying to figure that out today, in fact. I've had that car somewhere between 12 and 15 years, all right? Between 12 and 15 years. I've got my sprayer mounted on the back. I mean, that's what I spray my yard with for insects or, or whatever I need to spray. It's got a wand and a a wand sticking straight out the back that does like a probably about seven foot wide path so I can cover a lot of area. I have, I, I mean, that car has paid for itself a thousand times. I mean, that's, that's the greatest car in the world. You ask any golf cart mechanic that's been in the golf cart mechanic in business as long as I have, and I guarantee you they're going to say that's one of their favorite cars is a Yamaha G1 Gas. That's it. I said it. I'm not taking it back. Yamaha G1 Gas, one of the best cars ever made, if not the best car ever made. Oh, and by the way, I've had that for 12 to 15 years. Like I said, I've never changed the battery. That's right. It's the same battery that's been in it the whole time. The battery that's in it is an Optima, an Optima spiral cell red top. It's a red top Optima starting battery. Same battery. Missy said, that's so awesome. Well, you know, one thing, I think they're the best golf car ever made, but I, I never really thought they were the most attractive golf car ever made, but that doesn't matter when you're trying to get some work done. And that thing has gotten some work done over the years. There is no doubt about it. Let's see, number eight on the regular questions. I have the roof and everything for it too, the roof supports and the roof. It's just, it's just better for me to use it without the roof for my situation. Let's see, number eight, EasyGo accelerating issues and battery issues. Recently, my EasyGo golf cart has been lagging in speed, especially when going up an incline. The batteries are also losing power fairly quickly. Well. I think you just answered your question there. I installed Trojan batteries last, last year, so I don't think it's a battery issue. Well, if they're losing power quickly, then I, it is a battery issue. If they're losing power quickly, you definitely do have a battery issue. Uh, you have to understand, I know, I know you just got them last year, but it could just be one cell in one battery. You know how you have uh, several cells in each battery? It could just be one cell that's causing your problem. Let me check over here on Facebook. No, oh, we're good there. Number nine is where we're at. Let's see, we'll, we'll wait on number nine. Kurt, what's up, man? On my 88 club car, can I push the cart without power? Should I place the forward and reverse in the neutral position? I've been told it might damage the electrical system. On an 88, you can pretty much do whatever you need to on an 88. You're, you're, 
I, if I'm if you if you told me the right year, I mean that's not a that's not a regenerative braking car, an '88. So you can you can push it and whatever. It's not going to damage anything. Now, if it was a newer car with a run tow switch, that's probably what somebody was getting confused about that told you that. They're talking about a newer car with a run tow switch. You've got to put it in tow or you could damage the electrical system. But you're not going to damage an 88 by, by pushing it or, or, or towing it or anything. And you don't have to put it in neutral either. Missy, yes, they are hard to find. There's, they kind of have like a cult following nowadays. I mean, if there's, there's people that you know, because they've they've gotten so hard to find. As far as I know, that one is all original too. I don't even think it's ever been rebuilt. I don't think the top end's ever been redone. I've never done it. I've never see. I keep waiting. Uh, in the the thing about it, I've had that for so long. You'd think I'd know a lot about them. Well, the thing's never broken down on me, so I don't have a lot of experience at, at actually fixing them. I have some. I mean, a few of them ended up in my shop over the years. And I, but there was, it was simple stuff that they, that I had to fix on them. But my personal one has never broke down. All I did is I, I put some, I changed the, the rear end oil when I got it, uh, 12, 15 years ago, by the way. Yeah, I, that's when I did that. I put a new air filter in it, put a new belt on it, and I, it's still running the oil injection. It's still running the oil injection tank. It still works fine. And I put gas in it and I put some new tires on the rear, a little bit more grippy knobbies, but. Yeah, it's a, it's a real, they're real good cars when you get a good one. And a, a lot of the parts are, over the years, have become not available anymore. So some people uh, have actually started recreating the parts and making them available. But they're, you know, they're not exactly OEM, but they're as close as you can get. Anybody want to know about that stuff for G1s, by the way, Set up a GHOD with me. I could talk about them all day long, and I can tell you some good places to go to get parts for them if you need them, if you can't find them, if you can't find parts. But a lot of parts are easy to find, uh, but some of them are not as easy to find. But you can actually get some pretty good top-end cylinder kits for, for G1 gas nowadays, too. And there are also companies out there, there are companies in Georgia, by the way, Missy, that uh, you can send your motor in as a core, They'll take your engine as a core, they'll turn around and ship you a, a G1 gas, already rebuilt, new piston, new cylinder head, everything, with a warranty. They'll send that to you, and by the time you get your core credit and all that stuff, you're in at about 600 bucks. Brand new motor in a G1, or, or brand new rebuilt motor. Now that's, that's not a bad deal, if you ask me. And that's what I plan to do. But it's been, like I said, 12 to 15 years. The stupid thing keeps running. Kurt says, yep, an 88 and still running great. Well, that's good. That is good, Kurt. Yeah, you can push that, whatever. You, you're not going to hurt anything. Oh, side sticky rubber pads and sticky on one side, and slap it in between where it's squeaking. The roof windshield support squeak. Oh, Ab, I see. I'm sorry I missed your question. I'm glad Missy got you. Tried spray lubricant, but still squeaks. Thank you, Missy. Sometimes the the I get distracted and the and the questions go by. All right, let me check Facebook again. We're good there, and we were about to answer number nine on the regularly scheduled questions. Installed a lift kit, new motor, and battery on my DS2002. It wobbles at high speed. Is there anything I can do to make the car more stable at higher speeds? Well, what's the first thing I say do anytime you install a lift kit? The first thing I've said, I've said it before many times. You're going to have to check your front end alignment. That'd be the first thing. Always check your front end alignment and redo it because when you when you go with a lift kit, uh, also when you go with a lift kit, any problems that your car had before it was lifted, when it was down, any slack that you had in any of your components, your A arms, your bushings, or anything, and then you lift it, you lift the car. Those problems are only going to be exaggerated. So when you install a lift kit, especially on an older car, expect to have to 
uh, replace some other components like some bushings or anything that you that you find when you in during the installation of the lift kit any place where you find unusual amounts of slack then try to figure out how to replace those parts then that will help you when you when you finish to stop from having speed wobbles like like what you're describing because uh, like i said raising it up makes everything worse so you probably had these problems before you, you put the lift kit on. It just didn't show up as much, is what I'm saying. David Irwin, what's up, David Irwin? Did I talk with you, David Irwin? I think I did. I think I talked with you this week, didn't I? Thank you for coming, man. I appreciate it. I believe I remember your name. And tell me, I believe I'm correct. Missy, get ready. I'm gonna let uh, we'll let you remind Tim, but don't get used to taking my job. David Irwin's yes. Okay, I, I I did remember. I thought I remembered your name. Thanks for dropping by, man. Now you know who you were talking to on the phone. And if you didn't know before, I can't remember if you knew before or not. Let's see, Jathan, back on Facebook. I have a 36 volt battery pack. One of the batteries can only be trickle charged up to four volts. The others are more than six volts. Can I just change out the one battery? Jathan, that's a very common question, believe it or not. And here's the answer. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. The answer is yes, you can do that. You can change out one battery and that will fix your cart and you can drive away everything will be fine because four volts is, means you have a dead cell in that battery. So that'll fix whatever, whatever problems your cart was having. Most likely very, very weak performance. Maybe it would still roll, but very extremely weak performance. And that's just with one cell down. But my question would be, how old are the rest of your batteries? Like if your batteries are, are brand new, are less than a year old, then yeah, replace that one battery and, and move on. But if your batteries are four years old or more, and you've got that situation going on, you gotta ask yourself this, well, I'm gonna spend a hundred and something dollars to replace this one battery, and then next month, you're gonna have the same thing's gonna to happen to one of the other ones. And then you're gonna you're gonna keep doing that over and over and over again. So just keep that in mind is is the answer to the question there. You just gotta decide if you wanna to continue to chase this thing, and it depends on how old your battery pack is. Don't expect to get too much more than five years out of a good lead acid pack. If you do, just just count yourself as being lucky, you know, that you got you got more than five years. I've heard customers say they've got they've got a seven year old, an eight year old lead acid pack that's still doing good. Well that's great. But don't expect more than five years is what I'm saying. Oh, David, okay, you're the one that I, we talked about the tilt. We talked about the tilt wheel. That's right. David pointed something out to me. Uh, let me see if I have my notes here from when I talked to you. Thank you for reminding me, David. I talked to a lot of people and I don't always remember exactly what we talked about. Uh, you know how you know how we've had customers or we've had some questions before that have come up and someone had asked about, uh, he wanted to know if anyone had chopped a, a steering column and shortened it because a, the man was too big to get in there, it's too tight. I mean, let's face it, men come in lots of different sizes, you know, so sometimes they can't fit in there behind the steering wheel, so they, they want to they wanna chop it and make it shorter so they can do it, and people have done it. I've seen people do it. Well, David pointed out that, he pointed out a company I, I was aware of called I Did It has a tilt steering wheel that helps. It's an expensive steering wheel because it has a tilt mechanism in it where you can tilt the steering wheel up. David pointed out that a steering column out of an older Chevrolet, like a 69 El Camino or something like that, would actually work fairly well. And you've got controls if you wanted to wire, if you wanted to wire some of your lights and everything in, you've got, you've got all that up there and it works, it works really good. So that's what, that's what we had talked about. So that was pretty cool. I didn't know that. I'd never heard anyone uh, bring that up. Let's see, Keith, what's up, Keith? Sorry I'm late. Hey, Tim, Keith from Nashville. Hey, Keith, doesn't matter. You can be late, just, just, just be here. <laughs> I appreciate you being here. It doesn't matter if you're late. Okay, number 10. 
last regular scheduled question for today. And we're right on time, by the way. The brake lights are on and won't go off. How can I disconnect them? Well, are you sure there's a problem? Because there's two, there's two different types of, of brake light mechanisms. Because you think about how, that, how that's got to work. Think about what it's got to happen in order for that to work. You want your brake lights to come on every time you push your brake, correct. But you, golf cars have that parking brake on top. And that uh, requires you to push your brake to lock that parking brake. All right. So if you just if you if your brake lights were activated by your brake pedal just hitting a switch and you lock that parking brake, still hit that switch and your brake lights are going to stay on. Okay. That's so. What did they have to do? The geniuses came up with the two micro switch system. There's two different types of, of ways. I don't, I'll, I'll go over both of them. There's a two micro switch system. One micro switch is activated every time you push the brake pedal, turning your lights on, and then you let off the brake pedal and they go out. All right. The second micro switch comes into play when you lock the brake. It disconnects the first micro switch, so your brake lights go out if you hit the parking brake. That's the first time. That's sort of a mechanical, electrical type situation. The other type of, of the way that they turn your brake lights out is that your brake lights are hooked to a timer. So in other words, as long as you push the brake and let off, the brake lights will go out every time you let off, and then you, you lock the brake if you lock the brake to the parking brake, there, your brake lights come on still, but they'll sit there and they'll wait and see if there's somebody in the car, basically. They'll wait and see if there's anyone or have you left, and the timer's going off. And if it, if it goes, if they stay on for like four minutes, the timer will go out. So you need to be sure that you don't have one of those when you say your brake lights stay on. Let them go for four or five minutes and see if they ever go out, then you have a timer. But if not, if you don't have either one of those uh, types of systems, then you, you have some kind of issue somewhere else for sure. Let's see. Kurt says you can hit save and watch the entire program later. You can do that? I didn't know you could do that. You can do that on YouTube, Kurt? Run the social media stuff. There's the social media links if you want to follow us on any other platform besides YouTube and Facebook. But if you uh, enjoy this content, please like and subscribe on YouTube and Facebook. But those, you can follow us anywhere you would like. All right. That's that. Now let's run the coupon. Bam. Tim Giveaways. Get 5% off any, any parts you order at golfcartgarage.com if you use the coupon code TIM10, T-I-M-1-0. This expires on May the 18th, 2023. Uh, get 5% off at Golf Cart Garage if you use TIM10 at checkout. Let's see. Key said he subscribed so he can watch any time. Ab says you can also save this video in your favorites or watch later. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. All right, Missy. Thank you. It's time for the tip. This week's tip. All right. What do you think it is? The name, the, uh, the name of the uh, episode was speed wobbles. I talked to I talked about installation of a lift kit and so what do you think the tip is? Yeah, I've, ar I've already said it basically. I'm, I always I always already say the, the tip in the earlier in the episode. I just kind of repeat it at the end. The, the tip was is that during the installation of a lift kit, any lift kit, look for anything on, that has uh, an excessive amount of slack or even a little slack just a little slack even and plan to replace those things and and alignment you're right greg and the alignment anytime you do a lift kit always realign your front end because it's they're not going to be exactly you know the tolerances in golf carts are not near as tight as they are in the automotive world so anytime you add something to your front end or you know a, like a lift kit and you've got extended spindles You've got different springs now, you've got a drop axle, whatever kind of lift kit you got, 
it's going to change your steering. Okay, you're going to need to readjust your steering to, to what? To one eighth inch toe in. Now you can go to zero toe in first if that's, if that's more simple for people to understand. I like to go to zero toe in. In other words, make sure your tires measured from the inside of the two, of the two front tires, the inside to the inside of the other one. Take that distance, go to the rear of those tires, not the rear of the car, the rear of those two tires, inside to inside of the rear of the front tires, inside to inside of the, of the, of the front of the front tires, okay? Make sure those measurements, if those measurements are the same, then you know you have zero toe in. At that point, you can grab your tie rods and just give them a, give them a little twist and you'll see your front tires toe in just a little bit because one eighth inch is just a little bit, just a little bit of toe in. And then you know you're right and you can lock it down. And then go set your steering wheel. After that, you know, go, go set your steering wheel center. I know we talked about that too. All right. Dynaman, you all right? He's asleep today. I don't know why he doesn't want to make an appearance. Can you use dyno beads in your tires like they do in motorcycles? You mean like uh, they're they're uh, you're talking about those balancing beads? I would think I would think you could if that's what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Missy did good with the tip reminder. Well, I only had Jathan over on Facebook. I'm not going to tell Jathan what Missy said about, about people on Facebook. He might take it the wrong way. I didn't get a lot, don't get a lot over there. Okay, I have run the coupon code, I have done the questions, I've done the social media links, and I have given the tip. I think we're about done, guys. I appreciate everybody coming by. Thank you, David, for stopping by. Had, uh, it was nice speaking with you on the phone the other day. Uh, let's see. Everybody just remember, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 noon Central Time, we come here twice a week. We go over some questions. We, hopefully we learn something. Uh, if not for me, we learn something from the members. I mean, that's gonna be the main thing. I would like to get the members up to a certain point where we learn something from them every week like we did from, like I pointed out from David. I will always be glad to share information that I, that I, that I hear from uh, people I talk to on the phone. I talk to a lot of people on the phone every week. I don't just only do this. I do talk to people on the phone all week long also. So, I think we're gonna be out of here. Yep, all right. I will see y'all on Thursday. Yeah, today's Tuesday. I will see everybody on Thursday. Please come back and we'll, we'll, we will talk again. Would not let me get on Facebook. I don't know. I don't know, David. I don't know about that. Anyway, if as long as it's letting you get in on YouTube, that'll be fine. But we're on both. Easy Mike says outstanding. Cool. Thank you, Easy Mike. I'll see y'all Thursday. Garage is now closed.